I don't know if they could allocate more money to help people. I don't know what the state can do. I just think you'll hear a lot of people this happened to. Now, more than 150,000 people, including health care workers, teachers, grocery store employees, and more, have gotten premium payments from the state that's known as Hero Pay. It's a one time direct deposit for all of their work during the pandemic. Yeah, but some essential workers applied and they are still waiting. Denise Wolgamuth telling us that she never got any communication and she's still waiting for her check. She's pretty confused. So, what can the state do? Well, like Denise asked, and she wants to know exactly what happened, so we're getting some answers for folks at home. State Comptroller Sean Scanlon is here with us this morning. Thanks for taking the time to be with Good us. Good morning. Good to be here. A lot of people are writing in. They're frustrated, rightly so. A lot of checks have gone out, but a lot of people are still waiting. What do you say to those people and why? Well, this was a complicated process that began actually before I even was elected to be this Comptroller of the state of Connecticut, and we're doing the best we can to make sure that everyone who applied and that was deemed eligible gets their money. We have the last last batch of 5,000 checks going out tomorrow, um, and we've been working every day, including myself, to talk directly to people who had questions and concerns. We've answered a lot of them. 150,000 payments have gone out, but there are a few people who made mistakes in their applications, were deemed not eligible, and as a result of that, there has been some confusion. Yeah, 150,000, that's a lot of payments, but was it more than you were expecting, and if so, did that lead to some of the problems with this? Was it sort of a volume and congestion issue? Well, again, I wasn't comptroller when the designed the plan. I wasn't comfortable when the application yeah. process happened. I came in sort of in the eighth inning of a nine inning game and we're right. doing the best to make sure we close out that game strong. Um, but we did get a lot more applicants than we thought we would. Uh, one of the first things I did as comptroller was to actually go to the governor and the legislature and ask for more funding because we knew that we weren't going to be able to make those payments that they deserve. Listen, these are our frontline heroes. I want to yeah. do everything I can to help them. But this has been a complicated process, but we're doing the best we can. Now for folks at home who have sent in the application, they haven't gotten their payment yet but they also haven't gotten a call. Are they going to get a payment or are they going to get a call if they filled out that application incorrectly? I think that's where some of the confusion is. We heard from one woman who yeah. said she called and then she was told that she filled out the application incorrectly, but yeah. she was never notified, so she had no way of knowing. In some cases, it sounds simple, but it, people wrote the wrong email address. They put a letter wrong in their email address and they never got the successive amounts of emails. Um, tens of thousands of people did get those emails telling them they got something wrong. I extended the deadline as comptroller to March to give people another opportunity to do that. But sometimes with m small mistakes that they made during the process, they never got the communications. Um, I've talked to personally hundreds of people and we've resolved their problems, but there were some people that made a mistake on their application yeah. and therefore never got in the hopper for us to actually try to help them fix their application. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have an email we got this morning from a man named David Scatini. I don't know if his problem falls into that bucket, but he said he was initially approved, but then after a long delay in communication, was eventually told by somebody that he was no longer eligible. Yeah. Maybe he isn't eligible, but that seems like a slightly different problem. What would you say to David? Well, one, when I took office, I wanted to make sure, as the fiscal guardian of Connecticut, that we were making payments to people who actually deserve them and qualified for them. And this was very complicated because a lot of these people were frontline heroes. They were great right. and doing great things for Connecticut, but because of the way they structured the bill, they just weren't eligible for it. And so we did a second audit of this to make sure that that money was being properly spent, which is something we should be doing in government, and as a result of that, found people who were ineligible, not because they didn't work hard during COVID, not because they didn't deserve recognition for that, but because they didn't apply um, and the law didn't apply to them. Uh, and so we, we did have to unfortunately have some people lose out on that program, um, but we did safeguard the taxpayers' money. And there are efforts right now in the legislature to expand the program that would allow people like that to apply again and perhaps get the funding. So I just want to clarify for folks at home, if they didn't get their payment yet and they don't get it in the next week, that means they were somehow ineligible? It means they were ineligible. They can always contact our office or the consultant, which is PCG, and ask them for an explanation, and I'm always happy to give that to them. Okay. But if they don't receive the check in the mail or a direct deposit in the next 24 hours, they likely had a problem with their application. And they won't get it. And they won't get it. Okay. But we're talking about hundreds, not tens of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. And is that uh, calling your office the single best way, the preferred way? And uh, if so, I mean, do you have the number off the top of your head, a website? Which What's the best way to get in touch with yeah, your office? The best office? way to go is to osc.ct.gov. You can find my email, my contact information on there. Call our office. We will happily 
happily give you the answers that you deserve. I'm sorry to hear that people are frustrated by this. It has been a frustrating process. I'm doing the best, as is my new team here, as the new administration of the mm -hmm. Comptroller's Office, to get back to every single person, give them the answers they deserve, and hopefully get them the money. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we appreciate you coming on our show and explaining to viewers yep. the situation. And of course, we know something you just walked into, so you're doing the best you can. <laughs> so, but, sometimes you just gotta take them one by one, yes. email at a time. But, Glad to give yeah. the heroes the thanks that they deserve. Absolutely. Okay. Comptroller, thank you so much. Good to be thank here. You.